have to admit, growing up with Nintendo as the primary source for video games made me fall for many a character. Banjo and Kazooie, the bear and bird, whom became my favorite platformer duo. Link, the hero of time, who showed me that even a small boy can be a man. And of course, Donkey Kong, who proved to me the way of the monkey. So of course, I loved playing the original Super Smash Brothers when growing up as you could control these lovely individuals. Exception being the Bear and Briegel. But one of the roster always stood out to me. The science fiction dude in an orange army with a massive gun! I like to play around with him, but one day, while chilling with one of my siblings, this happened. Pikachu! He's a girl?! Oh my god! And so I was introduced to the Metroid series, a franchise that was a bit more mature than the others you could find under the Big N. That being said, I didn't really start playing any of these games until I was in my 20s. And being more of a prime nut myself, I never really got into any of the 2D games. Until, of course... Oh, holy F, I'm in! Having Dread, also known as Metroid 5, being just around the corner, I thought it would be a great opportunity in truly getting to know this mysterious heroine, who has been an icon in gaming since 1986. And with this journey selected, an analytical video on this woman seemed too perfect. So, before we begin, a few things. One, this will only focus on the original timeline, which centers on our girl's relationship with a certain being, so no Prime games will be in the spotlight. <laughs> I will also, since the creator of the franchise recently gave us a timeline himself, not go too deeply into the infamous other M game, which I believe would be good for all of us, including our protagonist. Remember me? And finally, this series, being a science fiction story, holds a lot of interesting names for both characters and locations. So please understand that I might, even if I do not want to, mispronounce a few things. We all understand one another? You're okay with me screwing up a few names here and there? Perfect! Then let's head into the mind of Seamus Aaron. You don't look Irish! First thing to do for this Samus Aaron video is to create somewhat of a timeline to follow. So we'll be going through our latest journey like this. Metroid Zero Mission, which is a remake of the original game, Samus Returns, the remake of the sequel, Super Metroid, and finally Fusion. As previously said, Other M will be mentioned here and there, and I will also add some of the story beats from the manga that came out a year prior to Zero Mission's release. There are a few inconsistencies when it comes to the two mediums, but considering that the Game Boy Advance games have some pictures that highly resembles the manga art style, I feel that the most important plot moments are worth going into. So, let's do just that! On the Earth mining colony, K2L, Samus lived together with her two parents. Her father, Rodney Aaron, and her mother, Veggie... Kyrie? Kyrie! Now, we don't really have any information on how the young girl lived in a slice of life setting, if you will. But what we do know for certain are two things. She loves animals, evidence being who she ended up calling Pyomchi, and she wants to befriend whomever she meets, regardless of species. Proven when she meets a few aliens known as Chozo, at the age of three. Immediately wanting to play with these bird-like beings, she got close to one who told Samus to call him Old Bird. So yeah, nothing too special, but still always lovely to see a child youthfully believe in anyone they meet, even if they were to come face to face with someone less than stellar. As not long after her new bird nerds left the colony, another group showed up for a visit. The Space Pirates. Yeah, that's the actual name of their faction. Anyways, our young girl ended up meeting a scary looking being amongst them who, even if she clearly was scared, was someone she would like to befriend. But this time, this bird-like alien had another reaction than the last one she met. <laughs> but just before the purple space dragon could get its prey, the child's mother used the power of parental love as a shield, which creates the smallest moment where Ridley's ship come crashing down on top of him. From some action that happened somewhere else. This video is brought to you by Reuse Joke. <laughs> How it all ended, we do not know, nor would anyone else in the galaxy, aside from the sole survivor of the K2L colony, Samus Aran, who was picked up by the returning Choso. Taking the little girl with them to their planet, Zebes, the Choso's AI, Mother Brain, was quick in analyzing that the child, being a human, would not survive for long in their ecosystem. So having no choice, they fused Samus with their people's DNA, primarily using Grey Voice as the donor. And this created something truly special, as now the human could do some inhuman feats, like adapting to alien worlds that would normally kill a regular person, giving her some amazing physical capabilities, like making her faster, stronger, and 
uh, jumpier, Samus Aaron truly became a superhuman. Because of bird DNA. For 11 years, the sole human in Zebes was trained by the Chozo in many different arts, all from combat to ecology. They gave her even a customized power armor, making her into a force to be reckoned with. But she still found it not to be enough, as even with the harsh training, Samus wanted to become something more. Probably because Old Bird believes that she can be a protector of the galaxy. So at the age of 14, she went to the Galactic Federation for some military training. Again, we have a time skip, as between the age of 14 to 17, our girl trained vigorously at the Academy, where it was claimed that she excelled in everything, but had the small misfortune of going against orders if they clashed against her moral compass, like when rescuing a child who was about to get executed by a slaver, rather than waiting for backup. She also gained a few friends there, two gentlemen named Mauk and Kratz, Kratz, Kratz. She was under the command of the infamous Adam Malkovich, the man who always ended every briefing with if she had any objections. And yes, Samus also met this guy. Me. No! What is important here, as we're getting closer and closer to the end of the manga, is that the news of space pirates attacking Zebes has reached the Galactic Federation. And as it is indeed Sam's second home, she is quick to decide on getting there to look for survivors. This creates, as previously mentioned, some conflict with her superiors, as they want to blast the planet as quickly as possible, since Chozo technology is something that, even in the sci-fi setting, dominates completely. But with determination, our lady will act on her own accord, to the point where she's aiming her arm cannon right at Adam, who surprisingly is giving her 48 hours to complete her mission, showing that he indeed is truly a good person. So, with her two friends, Kratz and Mauk, they blast off to Sebes to figure out what the hell happened there, which will become one of the most important days of Samus' life. On the planet where she spent most of her life in, our future Galaxy Defender finds a hologram message of Old Bird with the help of Pionchi, her animal companion, who in said message claims that they were able to flee the planet with most of the Chozo, while also giving knowledge of the Metroid, learning that her father figure wants her to get rid of this engineered species, which definitely will not have any repercussions. X go give it to you. What else got a small consequence from returning to Zebes filled with space pirates will be of course the new leader of that insidious group, Mother Brain, the Chozo's artificial intelligence, who in typical robo fashion came to the conclusion that it could create a new age for the universe under its guidance. And it also wants Samus to join as the Brain explains that her foster family trained her to be a function. A weapon. Very much how Mother Brain itself was created for the sole purpose of pushing for a brighter future. It also doesn't help that Grey Voice is there having betrayed his race for Team Evil. Of course, being what the kids call shook, our badass is going hard ass on the AI. But as always, things can always get worse as Samus Aaron, after almost 14 years, comes face to face with the space pirate Commander Ridley. Which causes our heroine to go through a PTSD episode. To which the purple space dragon starts taunting her in that he had to consume the girl's mother to survive the massive explosion? What did I just read? <laughs> Luckily for our uh, brave hero, her two companions are quickly in coming to the rescue when the space pirates get ready to deal with the upcoming Federation fleet. And with their help and the Chozo hostages still there, they are able to bring the young girl out of her despair, creating a determination in saving and protecting those who still can have a future. Though as they all are getting into a ship, ready to fly out of the dangerous planet, the villains are about to shoot them down, only to have Grey Voice get in the way, showing that he never planned to betray his people, but worked to stall the monsters in hope that a protector could come and save them. And Sam sees this, witnessing the sacrifice of her surrogate father, an individual she shares DNA with. So in the end, getting some help from the Galactic Federation, the rescue mission was a success, but with some direct consequences, as our heroine almost immediately leaves the Academy to find her own path in the world, creating another time skip. A time skip which leads us to a point where Aaron has gotten some fame as the galaxy's greatest bounty hunter. Yet also she made her information as guarded as possible, having many people believe that she indeed was a man. They're disgusting. No, they're men. You're gonna have to act just like them, so pay attention. Back to the story. As Samus returned to the Galactic Federation several years later, our bounty hunter was hired to do what should have been done all those years ago. Go to Zebes, destroy all Metroids, which the Space Pirates have been weaponizing, and Mother Brain. Which finally brings us to Metroid Zero Mission. 
took some time to get to the first game, but to be fair, all of the adventures of Samus are highly lacking in dialogue slash cutscenes. I felt it was important to get the roots correct before having the tree be as good as it can be. And my god, what a good looking tree it is. I have no clue what I'm trying to say here. But what I do know for certain is that, as stated earlier in this video, the advanced game is a remake of the original Metroid with newly added areas that connects the manga to the story better. Having gotten her mission, Samus once more leaves for her second home planet, and she realizes that to get to the lair of the mastermind, the base named Torian, she has to deal with the commanders of the space pirates. A chunk of a boy called Kraid, and of course, Ripley. Why? I mean, Ridley. Dealing with the fat so is no issue for the bounty hunter, but the other member of the Super Dragon Brothers is a bit more challenging, all things considered. However, one thing that sticks out as a difference in the manga and the interactive medium is how Our Lady gets the upgraded armor, the Varia suit. In Zero Mission, Samus needs the new suit to deal with the extreme temperature in Norfair, her nemesis's lair, but in the black and white pictures, she has some sort of hallucination, or maybe it's uh, some Chozo tech at work. Regardless of what it is, Grey Voice shows up, telling her that while the Chozo might have no more to offer to the world, she is their successor who can do so much better than them. Someone who can be more than a beast made by combat, giving her the new tech. Which immediately leads to... After so many years of training to become the ultimate warrior, this purple monster setting her on this path, Samus finally shows the space pirate why she will become so much more than just a bounty hunter. She shows the murderer of her parents that she will be something truly different. And she does this by destroying most of his body, leaving him to bleed out. While I'm sure that she would have finished the job, she sadly do not have that much time to dally, as she quickly learns that there has been a Metroid breakout, killing most of the underlings of the now beaten Ridley. So, deciding on finishing the mission, Samus comes face to face with a machine that, to some extent, could be considered a mother figure for the once three-year-old girl arriving at Sebes. And so they fight! Yet where Mother Brain was created for knowledge and procedure, the Chozo raised his armor-wearing warrior to be just that, a warrior, leading to the defeat of the AI. This causes the self-destruct sequence to begin, making our hero rush back to her gunship, blasting off from the exploding base, where all the Metroids were, Samus, finally can rest, after not only dealing with a galaxy threat, but also concluding something that has been hurting her for so many years. I've made a huge mistake. So this was added to the remake. In my opinion, not that much worth going into here, but what is great, aside from the introduction of the Zero Suit, is that when Samus sneaks into the Chozo's primary temple, Chozodia, she reminisces on her past with the aliens. I find that pretty cute, actually. After that, she gains the gravity suit, after doing some sort of test, kills all of the space pirates that gets in her way, destroys a robot recreation of Ridley, and finally steals a pirate vessel and gets the hell out of there. Mission accomplished! Continuing on with our timeline, this is actually where the Prime games come into the picture, but we're not talking about those. Metroid 2 Return of Samus this time, or as the remake is named, Samus Returns. Big difference, clearly. Anyways, sometime after the first game, a new mission from the Galactic Federation is given to our main gal, as they have deemed the Metroid threat to be far too dangerous. They did find out that the planet known as SR388 has these as its inhabitants. So, the new directive goes as follows. Go to the planet, find out what happened to our missing scouts, and exterminate the entire species. Of course, having the Chosa's will behind her, Sam has clearly accepted this mission. There's also the chance that she's getting paid, but that's never mentioned, and I kinda hope that they will explain that in Dread. Like, seriously, everything this chick has done, she deserves a thick wallet! Could you pay me in advance? <laughs> Getting to SR388, she quickly figures out that the Federation scouts found their end here, and then the entire game is just about killing these predators. 
pretty simple actually, but what is far from simple is one thing that happens that ends up being one of the most important moments of the bounty hunter's life. The meeting with the baby Metroid. Samus has been through a lot. Orphaned at the age of three by the hand of a beast, she grew up by a people who wanted her to become a defender of the galaxy. Yet her decisions has been nothing more than becoming an attacker, an aggressor, a warrior, who has admitted to doing dirty jobs. One could consider this extermination of entire alien species, genocide, to be a rather dark deed regardless of their origins. Yet as she's looking at this hatchling, this child, this Baby, a part of her sees herself in that weird floating creature. And I'm sure that in turn, she can see that her actions are mirroring someone she might not have the greatest feelings towards. So, she does something she believes to be right. She does not kill this Metroid. She refuses to be a beast and would rather be the protector. It probably also has something to do with the fact that the baby imprints on Samus, believing the massive, almost two meter tall woman to be its mother. And it ends with the newly bonded mom and child trying to leave the planet together, only to be ambushed by our favorite dragon. <laughs> Though no newborn shall lose their parents to Ridley today, as together they kick his purple ass into the ground! Damn right! Mommy baby duo too badass to deal with! That's what I'm talking about! Anyways, Samus gives the Metro to some scientists. A bit unexpected, but at the same time one can understand that she believes that these people in the Space Science Academy could use the information for the betterment of the galaxy. So, almost as quick as Samus gets a little chunk, she left it. Which leaves us right at Super Metroid, the game considered by many to be one of the greatest video games of all time. And like all times, Samus almost immediately gets a distress call from the Academy, making her turn around to get right back to the scientists and her baby. This weirdly reminds me of my first day at the kindergarten as my mom had to return to get my crying ass. Pretty realistic. What I didn't get to experience in my childhood though, and I'm grateful for that, is the fact that every scientist is dead. The entire place, not too long after being there, is completely silent as a tomb at midnight. Running further into the base, Samus finds her baby, and of course, Ridley. You again? Before it could be decided, the dragon flies off with the Metroid, starting the self-destruction of the Academy, hoping it would give enough time to get away from the Bounty Hunter. But as she has already been through some of these exploding bases and whatnot, she's quick on his trail and follows Ridley back to Zebes, where she sees that the space pirates have been rebuilding. Rolling her eyes, Samus starts going through the motions. She Fs up Kraid again, destroys the personification of evil in the Metroid universe, Crocomire. And after a long search, after the exhaustion of having to go through so much damn combat and exploration, Samus Aaron finally kills off the murderer of her mother. Ridley is dead. Really it's weird to think about, but it's true. Every version of this lizard met later were either a clone or something of that kind. But the individual that destroyed Samus's human life, the beast that killed her parents, is gone forevermore. Samus wins! So pop that mighty dragon sadly slipped into his grave! Though there will not always be successes for a good hero, as when the Galaxy Defender goes deeper into Zebes, just before heading into another tussle, a MASSIVE Metroid comes out of nowhere, immediately siphoning the creature's energy before trying to do the same to our hero. For whatever reason, Samus can't or doesn't do anything to defend herself, so just before she loses consciousness, the creature stops, and then we hear it. It was the baby, which realized that it was attacking its own perceived mother. Running away in shame and fear, the hatchling vanishes, making the parent figure sprint after, only to lose sight of the massive being. 
So having no other options, she walks towards where it all ended before, Torian, the base of the space pirates. And after going through it, she once again confronts Mother Brain, which has been rebuilt and is very pissed off. Though where Samus beat it rather fantastically last time, it is worth to remember that this is a thinking machine, hence why it has upgraded itself to the point where the Chozo successor cannot win. But before the terrifying beast could kill off its arch enemy, the baby shows up protecting its mom! Draining the machine of its energy, as I will presume it can, considering that's a very real brain we can see, the child transfers it onto its mother. But when it's about to go ham once again... <coughs> Silence rings in the arena, the cry of the baby Metroid almost deafening the entire base. Yet in the tranquil space, Samus feels something that she has not felt for many years. Feelings that causes her to show everyone what happens when a mother grieves for her child. Using all of the powers given to her, she aims her cannon at the AI and blasts it off to smithereens! In its final moments, Mother Brain shows its spite by starting up a planetary self-destruct sequence, making our vengeful lady speed off to her ship. But on her way there, she comes across a few animals. Now, it is actually optional whether you want to save them or not, and you have a time limit. But considering that they do show up later in Fusion, we know that she did indeed take the risk. Plus, again, she loves animals. Even the freaking Pikachu that electrocuted her earlier. Thanks. And so we get to the next game in the timeline, which is Other M. I already said I wouldn't go too deep into this Wii experience, as even Nintendo doesn't want it mentioned. Yet there are still a few important notes to be taken here. One being the fact that the entire game pretty much explores the fact that Samus did indeed have motherly feelings for this creature, showing sadness that she will never see the baby again. Number two, it shows our girl getting a PTSD episode when meeting the clone of Ridley. I... I suppose... Pose it makes sense as she believed him to be dead and it surprised her but at the same time I personally think this actually weakens her character so let's just pretend it never happened what cannot be swept under the rug however is the fate of Adam Malkovich Samus' superior during her academy days who was an individual who trusted her stood by her side and believed that if there were anyone in the galaxy to send to deal with a difficult situation it would have to be Samus Looks like I'm gonna need to ask for your cooperation on this mission. But, you don't move unless I say so, and you don't fire until I say so. Go through the hatch on your right and head towards Sector 1. Proceed through the hatch I just unlocked. Head to the Biosphere Test Area in your current sector. Head to Sector 2. Head to Sector 3. Remember me? So he dies, thank God. I mean... It clearly affects our protag, as to some extent it could be seen as another family figure dying for her sake. Virginia saved her from Ridley, Grey Voice gave his life in the same fashion, the baby protected her from Mother Brain, and now Adam from a new Metroid menace. Yeah, things just get rougher and more difficult for the hunter, which perfectly leads us to... Metroid Fusion. Or Metroid 4, which means yes, the game canonically right before Dread. As all of the Metroids had indeed been exterminated from SR388, the Galactic Federation decided on sending down a team of researchers to see how the ecosystem has changed after losing such a predator. So, who better to protect them than the woman who went in there alone and committed genocide? <laughs> Am I allowed to use that word on YouTube? Eh, doesn't matter. What does matter, however, is that after being attacked by a weird creature, Samus gets infected by something never seen before. The X-Parasite. So when she crash lands later, the Federation brings her to a safe location and realizes that she indeed has been infected by something that is slowly corrupting the suit, and by extension, her. Seeing no other option, they make a serum of the cells from the baby Metroid, which they seemingly took at the lab when Samus delivered them in the first sequel, and inject it into her, allowing a protagonist like a Metroid to absorb energy while giving her the weakness to cold. As quick as it was done, the Metroid cell kills off the X-Parasite while also changing our protagonist. Yes, Samus is part human, part Chozo, and now part Metroid.
Also perfectly fitting that the cells came directly from her baby, let's be honest. The baby, the baby, the baby, the baby, the baby. That baby, babies cry, the baby, babies cry. The baby. <laughs> Sadly, she does not get any time to relax, as while they had the surgery, the Federation tells the now human chosen Metroid individual that an explosion has happened at the Biologic Space Labs research station, where they sent her armor and some of the animals they procured from SR388, hence asking her to go there and figure stuff out. She accepts, of course, borrowing a ship as hers crashed. Now, this new ship has a computer AI, which will be Samus's companion during the fusion adventure, and together they figure out a few things, like how the x that has come out of nowhere because their natural enemy were the now extinct Metroids. And the Parasites have the unfortunate ability in taking form of what they stick to. Which, yes, means that in this facility is... Knowing that this clone, the SAX, has all of our heroines' powers and abilities, our duo understands that they have to be a bit more stealthy this time around. The threat has to be dealt with. What I wish I could talk a bit more about is the fact that the SAX is like a distorted mirror of what Samus is, having it be the bioweapon that Mother Brain originally wanted. No mercy or remorse, only caring about power. I just really like that, because it shows that the nurture that she got from her two bird dads really paid off. So, she obviously has to get rid of this clone. Definitely when they get the knowledge that they can reproduce and get larger in number. Which means that the bounty hunter has to kill and absorb all kinds of weird monsters to power herself up. Transformed scientists! Nightmare fuel and... Oh my... You again! How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? Tough monsters and clones aren't the only challenges for our hero, as after some time, the Federation itself stops supporting the hunter, as the computer explains that they have gotten an interest in this life form, so having them destroying it would not be ideal. This angers our protagonist, for good reasons I might add, having her go rogue with a new mission. Destroy the entire area, including herself, if there is no other choice. It doesn't help when she figures out that they've also been breeding Metroids in secret. This all causes a massive argument between the lady and the machine. It claims that she's going against orders, that there will be consequences. This triggers Samus, having her accidentally calling the AI Adam, as she, throughout the entire game, felt a similarity between the two. The computer's reaction is interesting, challenging the woman in that the idea of her giving her life to this, after having her life saved with Adam's sacrifice, is a foolish decision. Which, once again, angers Samus tremendously. Yet before she can rub out, the artificial intelligence suddenly goes through all of the facts of Samus' plans, describing how, if she wants to get rid of this threat, the best way of doing so is sending the entire station crashing into the Metroid homeworld, as that would create a reaction to explode the entire space location. And in great shock, Samus realizes everything when the machine ends its briefing with... Any objections, lady? The AI is a copy of Malkovich's consciousness, and having finally some good support, she saves some of the animals locked in the station, as obviously they have to be protected. I'm also pretty certain that they are the same from way back then. Regardless, while they are safe and sound in her ship, she runs off to the operations room to send the station crashing against SR-388. But there she's confronted by the SAX, though after having absorbed so many parasites already and powering herself up, the clone truly is nothing compared to our leading lady. Though it does get away before she can absorb it. Before she can get away, however, something else confronts her. The ultimate life form, an Omega Metroid. The final stage of evolution for their species. Which means yes, had the baby survived Samus' previous visit to Zebes, then it would probably look like this a few years later. Mommy would be proud! The baby. And so the two creatures born from Choso ingenuity fight it out to figure out who truly is the ultimate warrior. Though fear, this is not. As Samus, regardless of how powerful she has gotten, does not have all of her original... Hello! Huh? Getting the Ice Beam back, the greatest bounty hunter in the galaxy curb stomps this massive beast of doom and gloom, finally finishing her directive. And before the BSL station crashes, her burrowed ship comes out of the blue, allowing her just in the nick of time to escape. Looking on as both the base and SR-388 blows up, they can breathe 
calmly, as this was the end of the ex-parasite threat. And when asking Adam, the computer, on how he was able to fly the spaceship alone, he shows the evidence that every good action will in turn give a good reaction. Throughout her entire life, Samus has suffered a great deal of tragedy. Orphaned at the age of three, seeing her mother die before her very eyes, being taken in by an alien race who she later finds out raised her to simply be a tool, an ultimate bioweapon who put all their burdens onto her shoulders. And the few of the Chosa who did care for her either got killed or vanished without a trace. Years later, being betrayed by the Galactic Federation whom she has been working with for ages just because of their interest in what she was being trained to destroy. All of this making her shut herself off from other people, basing her bounty hunter persona on anonymity and solitude. But for every time she faced a defeat, for every time she faced a loss, there will always be at least one in any species, in any group, who is willing to do the right thing. Samus might be the successor of the Choso's will, the protector of the galaxy, but she doesn't have to do it alone. She has learned that while there will be beasts out there like Ridley, there will be good people as well, like Old Bird and Grey Voice. While there will be people out there who see profit in tragedy, there will be those who will stand up to that evil, like Adam. There will always be at least one person who will help. Which shows Our Lady that while the galaxy is a dark place filled with monsters and selfishness, she herself does not need to turn into a beast. And that is the mind of Samus Aran. Remember me? You know, for every in the mind of I do, I recognize that my scripts get longer and longer, meaning that it takes more and more time to get these out, which also in turn means that YouTube will throw me in the poor area of the algorithm. So if you're interested in my future content, please subscribe and push that gray bell. Seriously, I need it, please, I'm desperate. <laughs> Aside from that, I want to thank the artist for making this amazing Samus art. You can find him in the link below. And why not also watch some of my older stuff? My Jill Valentine video is great, I promise. In conclusion, I moved to a new house, explaining why there haven't even been a smaller video out. Um, but now I can finally start making some more content. Therefore, uh, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.